you're outlining a procedure, for instance, you're trying to outline um, an experiment to determine the difference between an alkane and an alkene, those sort of types of practicals that you've done, um, you need to remember to include approximate amounts of the reagent. So don't just say that you're going to add bromine water to the, to the two substances. Um, you know, say to the examiners, you're going to put five mils in a test tube of each and that you're going to add three drops of bromine water to each test tube. So be a bit specific because that's going to give you a much better answer than the student that just names the reagent. So think about your quantities. Think about what you're doing. Think about safety, because uh, there'll often be uh, a mark somewhere in the paper for some sort of safety aspect. So think about either um, protective wear that you need to um, have yourself, you know, in terms of, you know, gloves or goggles or doing it in the fume cupboard, those sorts of things. Uh, and think about the disposal of the wastes as well. So often the marks are going to indicate to you how much depth you need to put into your, to your answer. You know, if it's five marks, then you've got to really be thinking this is quite a thorough answer that I'm giving, rather than just if it was two marks for outlining the procedure. So think about controls for your experiment and how you performed it. Now, if it's asking you to determine the difference between them, you're going to have to give some indication in your answer of the actual result of that experiment. Because otherwise, you know, just saying what you're going to do isn't going to tell you how you're determining the difference. So think about indicating to the examiners what's going to happen, how you're going to know what it is that they're, they're asking you in the question itself. <laughs> Um, for your extended response questions, you know, things that are about seven or eight marks, you really need to think about your plan for that answer because the Board of Studies papers will generally give you two lines for one mark. So you're having to put quite a lot of information down to score the full marks. So think about drawing a, you know, around at the, t at the top of the paper some sort of plan for your experiment um, or some sort of plan for your answer, you know, where you're going to go with your answer. Make sure that you're addressing all parts of the question because often there will be um, in the question not only to assess something but then it might also ask you to include equations or include examples. And if it's given the word examples, or equations, there's an S, you're obviously going to need to give more than one because they were looking for a plural. So at least give two, two to three examples to, um, you know, exemplify your point. Um, don't just sort of do a big brain dump where you're thinking I'm going to write down everything I know about this particular topic because the marks are for answering the question. So you need to make sure that you do address the question that you've been given and that you're addressing all parts of that question. Um, think about structuring your answer, um, perhaps even a, a table might help or bullet points will help. You know, you don't have to in your chemistry exam answer as an essay style. You can give dot points, you can use, you know, shorthand like little arrows meaning going upwards for increase or going downwards for a decrease of concentration. So think about your answer, think about your plan, think about whether a table or bullet points is going to really help give that deeper understanding to your question. It will also help avoid contradictions, I think. So, um, somewhere in your paper too, there'll probably be either a graph that you've got to draw or perhaps a graph that you've got to interpret. So, think about practicing all of the past HSC papers for graphs. Um, be very careful with manipulating the scale for your graph, making sure that you're actually reading that scale properly and you're actually plotting your points accurately because we are expecting you to be able to plot a graph so you know make sure that if the point is meant to be on the line that it's actually on that line uh, much better to use a cross than a, than a dot because often you can't see when we're marking the, a very fine dot so think about um, plotting your points accurately and then your line of best fit which doesn't have to be a straight line you can have curved lines of best fit so make sure that you're practicing drawing curves you know that you're able to interpret the data that you've got. Um, 
If you're drawing lines are best fit, often I, I mean I advise my students to have a see-through ruler so that they can see the points that are above and below the line. It's much better to get a, a good line of fit if you're doing that. Uh, and think about also about plotting the, the, the zero, zero point, because if that's been given to you as some of your data, don't ignore it. You do need to make sure that you put that point on the graph. So make sure that that's log logical. <laughs>